Okay, guys, here's what we're comparing today. 2024 Volkswagen Atlas and the 2024 Honda Pilot. These two are you for this year, which means we need to find out which one is the best out of these two, the new Honda Pilot or the Atlas. Let's roll. Before we start with the comparison, I want to talk about this car over here. Special thanks goes to our great friends at Bram Gates Volkswagen. They're a Volkswagen dealership located in Brampton, Ontario, Canada. They're kind enough to allow us to borrow this again because I did a full review. In case if you want to take this for a drive or check it out in person, guess what? Check out the link in the description below. They'd be happy to let you take this for a spin because I believe this is a demo. So that means you can take it for a drive. Now. Let's talk about these two. Let us begin with the exterior. Let's talk about what we have in here. Now, first of all, this is the Trail Sports. And I know some of you guys will say, wait a minute, why don't you get the fully loaded one? Well, you see, in Canada, we don't really have that luxury of just picking whatever we want. In fact, we couldn't find an Atlas, so we had to go to a great dealership. So this is what we're left. But guess what? The Trail Sport is not too far from the higher trim. The difference is the exterior picks like for example the wheels these are the 18 inch but you can get also 20 inch wheels and then of course the exterior paint choice in this case we have a two tone you have the rails blacked out then you have the mirrors and then you have this gray exterior color but again not too far off the higher trim on that side of course we have the highest trim but it doesn't have the R line package which is essentially an exterior package that gives you some enhancement to make it look a bit more sporty. But let's begin first with the Atlas. So here's what we have. In comparison to the Honda that has that blacked out grill that you see, this also has a nice finished grill with a bar light located right at the top of the badge and the actual badge lights up, which I think is a nice touch. And I've seen a bunch of these on the highway. They look pretty cool, I have to say. It just gives it a different presence. On that side, if you look at the Honda Pilot, we have this massive blacked out grill and we have LED headlights. With this package, we don't get fog lights, which is kind of disappointing because it is an off-road package essentially, but you can tell this massive grill, if you look carefully, not too far off from the CRV. This is essentially a bigger version of the CRV. The overall design, what do we think of them? I think the pilot on this side, it's a bit more curvy and boxy. And while the Atlas on that side, it is a full box on wheels. That's literally what this thing is. Now, one thing you need to know about in terms of dimensions, they're actually very, very close. The difference is that the Atlas does have a longer wheel base in comparison to that. But the length overall, this is about 200 inches compared to that, which is about 199 inches. But then the width is about the same and the height. So they're not very different. Now, one thing that I want to mention is the fact that with the Atlas, you can get wheels up to 21 inch. Meanwhile, with this here, the Pilot, only up to 20 inch. Now, why is that important? Well, guess what? If you go a size up, tires tend to get a bit more expensive. So if you want to, you could probably go with a 20 inch, which will cost you less. But generally speaking, one size up tend to be a little bit more expensive. Now that we've covered the dimensions, let's talk about space. And because of this bad boy over here, it is slightly bigger in comparison to the Pilot over there, it does offer you more space. And let us begin first with the third row. Behind the third row, the Atlas offers up a 21 cubic feet of space and you get some more space underneath here that you can use. There's also the subwoofer with the Harman Kardon package. You can also remove this completely and just leave it somewhere if you needed the extra space. And if you wanted to fold the third row, well, there's a few options. So you can do this over here like that. I believe there's also this option that you can do. And then you just fold them completely, but look how flat it is here. Now, 
Let's talk about with the seats down, the second row. Let me put them down for you. If you come closer, I'll show you. Here you go. You can do that completely to open it or it's gonna be interesting. And then I have a lever which you can essentially completely flat. That's one side, that means it's 60, 40. And then we do this and look at that, flat all the way through. This gives you about 56 cubic feet of space with the second row seat. So you got 21 versus 56. Now let's talk about the Honda. Okay, here we go. 19 cubic feet of space versus 21 behind the third row for the Honda. But you can, of course, fold the seats. These were actually a lot easier. And look at that. There's also some more space here. In fact, there's quite a lot of space because this doesn't have the subwoofer in here. That means you can get more space underneath. That's to move the seat forwards. And then that's to make it flat completely. In this case, with this package, we get six seats, but you can also get up to seven seats because this one comes with captain chair. And then here you go. Now, overall, the Hatlas will give you more space, but the difference is not that noticeable. By just looking at them, it's not huge. But when it comes down to numbers, yes, the Atlas will give you a little bit more. Let's jump first into the third row. We'll start with the pilot. How do you get into the third row? Well, there's a button located behind here. You push that and it automatically moves forwards. Or if that's too much, you can just like do this. There we go. Or you can just like jump on top of it. I don't think that's a smart idea, but let's just say if you needed to do that. But this one actually makes it pretty easy. Just one button. Now, let's see if we gonna be... Hmm. Okay, it is tight, not that tight, but it is a bit tight. So the seat doesn't give you much space in here. And then, okay, I do have to say that there's a lot of headroom in this thing in the back. It's comfortable. We got two cup holders in here. There's no other tech features, any USB-C or USB port with this. I do believe with the highest trim, you do get USB port, but that's it. Now, let's just say... It's actually not bad. I mean, I wouldn't do a five hour trip in here, to be honest, but it, I'm quite impressed. With it. This is not, it's not bad at all. There's a lot of space in here for someone in my house. I'm 6'2". Headroom is massive. Now let's get out and let's jump into the Atlas. I hope I, you know, I'm okay. Yeah, it's just a little bit here. It's tight. Now, how do you get into the Atlas? To the third row well now this this is a lot of space to get in but let's not get too excited till we actually get in yeah there's so much room in here with this package now let's do this actually first headroom about the same right thomas roughly about the same yeah because you can see better from here like i i have had room and this one it's sort of like pushed up to give you more room, which I think is super important. I'm 6'2", so it's nice and comfortable. Cup holders in here, some small ones. One is clearly for an espresso shot, and there's a two USB-C ports on this side, but nothing on that side. So you can connect your phone both for both people, I guess. They've used this side. With the higher trim in the Pilot, you get similar things. So, and then you get more space here, more space. The window, now that's one thing we need to talk about it. This feels a bit smaller than the one in the Pilot, a little bit smaller, but the difference is not, is not huge. Now, let's do this. In this position, I get a lot of leg room. I mean, it's, it's okay, it's some room. They're about the same, they feel about the same. I couldn't tell you that one is a lot better or a lot roomier, but one thing is for sure, this area here, it's a lot better with the Atlas. You can come out of here a lot easier. Now look at that. Oh, and there's more space. Like that to me is quite impressive. Now, since we are here, what do we do? Okay, so we have to do that. Move it here. Since we are in the Atlas, let's talk about the second row. First of all, some space here for cup holders, some space here for your phone, coins, whatever. And then cup holders down here. There's a sunshade on this side. You can just pull all the way up if I can do it. And this was one shot. 
and then jumping into the second row. Nice and comfortable. There's a single climbing unit, heated seats for both sides in this case, two USB-C ports at the bottom, a panoramic roof all the way across. You're sitting a bit high here in comparison to the seat in front of you, but not that high, which I don't mind it. It doesn't have that theater theme. Overall, lots of space, lots of leg room. With this package, you get three, two, two. That means seven seats in total, a cup holder in here. This doesn't come with a captain chair, different trim offers that. That means you get three seats in here, which is kind of nice. Very comfortable. Let's jump into the Pilot. Okay, into the Pilot. First thing, there's like a bunch of cup holders in here, which is quite interesting. And then you have a sunshade onto the sides. Now, the seat in here, you can do a few things. You can do that. Uh, you can also press the button on the sides. And then you can press the button behind here to fold it. Let me just move it all the way back. And actually, let me fix the seats in the front because it's not positioned as if I'm the driver. It's actually way back to make it fair. And here we go. Now it's perfectly positioned. Okay. So the first thing I noticed jumping in, I'm sitting lower in the back in comparison to the Atlas where I'm sitting higher. Um, it's nice. It's comfortable here. Spacious. Captain chair. There's some space in the center, which is nice single climbing unit, heated seats, two USB ports, no USB-C ports, and a beautiful panoramic all the way across. That's what I meant before, that they're not actually too far. The new, the higher trim Pilot does give you some extra features, but even the Trail Sport is still pretty loaded with a lot of tech. One thing you notice in here is that it's very rugged, very industrial. You, someone said today it feels like very industrial, and it does. Like, you can just scratch anything and it doesn't feel like it's going to break that easily. And I think that's the whole point of a three-row SUV, so you're not really being delicate with it. There's some space here, and they've included a pouch inside for your phone to slide so it doesn't move left and right, which I think, which I think is pretty interesting. The space in the center, it's comfortable. It's spacious. Lots of headroom here because I'm sitting lower in comparison to the Atlas. Now, let's jump into the first row, and we're going to start with a Honda. Okay, into... The pilots, that industrial theme continues. Let's start it up, button right there. Here we go. First of all, this is new for this year, new for pilots. This is a new generation, uh, but you have seen this kind of design before. Honda Civic, Honda CRV, it's not that different. It's not extremely different, it's somewhere close. We got a nice steering wheel, we got a small screen over there. And then lots of space, beautiful leather seats, power seat for the passenger side, same thing for the driver's side, trail sport badge on the seat, headrest with this package, which I think is quite nice. This doesn't come with a high premium audio system, but you can get Bose audio system with the highest trim. Now, let's get into the details and let's talk about what we have in here with this package and what it offers with the highest trim. Steering wheel, nice. Very much like a Civic, it looks similar to that. We have buttons here for the cruise control on this side, the audio system, voice control, and so on. There is a heated steering wheel with this package, which is nice. You have pedal shifters in the back. Cluster, not fully digital with this package, it's just a standard analog and digital, something you've seen in the Honda Accord, not too crazy. There's no heads-up display with this package, which is kind of disappointing. But yes, with the highest trim, you do get a heads-up display. Now, let's move into the center. Let's talk about the control unit here for the infotainment display. First thing you notice, it's a small screen and you get two screens with this Honda Pilot, the new generation, the seven inch and a nine inch. This I believe is the nine inch with this package, which again, it's missing a few things with this. Like you get a no 360 camera, which is kind of disappointing, just a backup camera with different modes. It is touch screen, it's nice, but there's no built-in navigation system. There is Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you can, you can control, uh, you can connect your phone through those uh, features. But other than that, it is very basic and everything is touch screen. As you can see, there's just a few buttons on this side. Moving on to the center area here, where there is the climate unit and all the settings. First thing you notice, this is much larger than what you see in the Honda Civics, for example. But with this package, you get heated seats. You do get ventilated seats with the highest trim. There is a dual climate zone in the front, single in the back, and you can control the climbing unit from here. You can also lock it if you have kids in the back, which is nice. I do appreciate that because it's buttons and I like buttons. I have nothing against buttons. I've said this many times. Moving a little bit down from the climate unit, you have this little pocket here. You can slide your 
phone maybe or keys or any of that there's two usb ports one to charge one to connect your phone then if we move further down here that is your wireless charging pad with this package and then there's more space onto the side center unit not a big fan of this i like the shift knobs like come on honda i've said this before but sure you get used to it drive mode sport mode with this package that's the reverse you go into park you get used to it but again big fan of shift knobs you have different driving modes with this package you got your normal eco snow trail sand tow and so on that's your downhill assist in this case let's just put it into normal so we don't get this thing crazy brake hold and you have the automatic brakes two cup holders armrest massive in fact you got so much space in here it's gigantic like my bag you can probably fit a a pet in there just to keep it right there nice and warm but it's big look at that massive i love the stitching love the leather one of the things you get with a honda pilot it's this this thing over here that you see that's the rear view camera you would say but this is not a camera it's actually just a mirror if you want to look back at your kids although most people would not well, okay is this thing broken come on oh, doesn't want to stay well that's interesting okay let's jump into the atlas first of all you jump in it's a different experience it feels a bit more premium. It feels a bit more luxurious inside. The way it's designed, the dashboard, the wood trim, the glossy black, which would be lovely after kids playing with fingerprints, right? The center part over here, a lot of that glossy finish, but it's the experience when you get inside this. It doesn't feel like an off-road machine all the time. Even the highest trim Pilot feels about the same, rugged, industrial. This feels a bit more premium. One thing I appreciate about the Atlas is the fact that in this, vehicle they didn't include those haptic buttons for the steering wheel these are actual buttons which i enjoy now let's get into the details let's start first with this side let's talk about features and what i like and don't like let's start it up first with the button located into the center and here you go we have a digital screen in this case the steering wheel it's nice and grippy with the flat button stitching around it the buttons over here you can control the actual uh cluster steering wheel is nice and grippy i like this pedal shifters behind you can change a lot of that information in there and you can also change the view it will show you the built-in map all the way through beautiful screen easy to use lots of information this also doesn't come with the heads-up display but i do believe with the r line you get a heads-up display with this one you don't now let's jump into the actual infotainment display let's talk about this massive 12.3 inch display First of all, it is touchscreen. It's easy to use, lots of information, built-in navigation. The layout is nice, it's crisp, it's sharp. It doesn't, real, it doesn't look like cheapy like the one in the Honda. I have to admit that it's, it's a nice feeling when you see something like this. There's that button over there that brings you back to the menu. There is more buttons over here. These are all haptic. And in fact, these can be used for your climate unit. So you're still getting some buttons for the climate unit, but then you can press a button that has climate and it brings you into the climate unit to the main menu you can control the rear side from here you have smart climate in this case that can do a lot of things like clear view warm your feet these are sort of like shortcuts and then you have air care and air care if you press that sort of like cleans the area around here which i think is quite nice look at that with this package we don't get a full 360 camera with the r line you do get that but in here you have your parking mode there is also a different settings with it your exit warning system maneuvering brake rear traffic um, and then you have the parking sensor on this side but one thing you realize is that's a lot sharper than the honda you have to say that that looks really nice and clean and you can adjust the settings in here too which i think it's quite nice now with the r line of course it gives you more tech features that you don't get with this package because it's not the fully loaded one this comes with harman kardon audio system with the subwoofer located at the back in here you have the buttons for the climate parking assist park menu and then you have the different driving modes from eco sport comfort custom off-row and snow so similar to what you get in the pilot then onto the side over here there is this extra space there's a wireless charging pad two usb-c ports and then moving on to this area over here we have two cup holders there is all the unit for the gears and the start park and the handbrake this doesn't have a button here that says auto handbrake but it does comes as an option 
then you get more space onto this side and then there is an armrest which does gives you some space but it's not as big as the one in the pilot just enough it's still spacious but not at the same level although you wouldn't be able to tell the difference nice and wide armrest for both passenger side and the driver which is quite helpful Okay, let's go for a drive and let's start first with the Honda Pilot. Under the hood, this beauty uses a 3.5 liter V6 naturally aspirated. It's making 285 brake horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque and it uses a 10 speed automatic transmission, very famous from Honda. In fact, the Accord used similar 10 speed auto, really nice and quick. This beauty with the V6 can tow up to 5,000 pounds, which is quite impressive. But the fuel efficiency, it's about 20 miles to the gallon for highway driving, 18 for city. And in total, the average is 23 miles to the gallon. The Atlas uses one engine in the US, which is a two liter four cylinder engine. And it makes essentially with this one, 269 brake horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. It used to have a V6, but then Volkswagen decided to change it. And it's crazy that with the, ten, with the eight speed automatic transmission, this thing can tow up to 5,000 pounds out of a four cylinder turbocharged engine, which is super impressive, you have to say. In Canada, shockingly, on the website, it shows that there is another engine, a 2.5 liter four cylinder that makes 187, but that's for the lowest trim. I didn't see that in the US. I hope it's not a mistake by Volkswagen, but the dealership, they were also shocked too. They said, we've never heard of it, but it's essentially the base model which offers that trim. In the US, it seems like it's a two liter across the board. Now the fuel efficiency for the Atlas with the four cylinder, it is slightly better. In fact, it can get you up to 21 miles to the gallon for highway and 19 miles to the gallon for city drive combined about 25, 26 miles to the gallon, which it is slightly better than what the Honda Pilot offers. Now let's talk about pricing and let's start first with the Pilot. In the US, the base model, LX model, will cost you about $37,000 USD. All the way up to the Elite version, which is not called the same in Canada, you're gonna pay about $52,000 US. Now in the US, they do offer a few more trims in comparison to Canada. The disappointing part is that if you wanted to get a hybrid, but right now there's not that many options. In Canada, the Pilot, the sport base model, starts at about $53,000, which is essentially, well, 101 would be the high trim in the US, but of course the conversion needs to be added. And then you can go all the way to the black edition, which is something not offered in the US, and that will cost you about $65,000. Thousand dollars. The trail sport that we are driving today is about sixty thousand dollars. So if you want to go all the way to the fully loaded one, you're going to pay over five, six thousand dollars Canadian. Now let's talk about the Atlas. The Atlas in the U.S. has a pricing, a starting price at about thirty-three, thirty-four thousand dollars. That is, that is of course for the SC, which is the base version. Then you can go all the way to the SCL Premium. R-Line, of course, they offer an R-Line package, which it does have some enhancement designs on the outside and inside. That one will cost you about $52,000, which is actually very similar to what the Honda Pilot cost in the US. In Canada, the Atlas has less trims in comparison to the US. You start with the Comfort Line, which is about $52,000 Canadian, which again is very similar to the cost of the base Pilot. Then it goes all the way up to the R line, exit line in this case, R line, which starts at about $62,000, which again is about the same price as the uh, Pilot High Trim, the Black Edition in this case. So in Canada, they have the Black Edition, and then you have the Elite Edition in the US, and then you have in Canada, if you had to compare it, there's the R line versus the Black Edition. So those are the two top trim for these models. But the Black Edition is essentially just an appearance package. It's the same thing for the R-Line with some enhancement in terms of tech features as well. But overall, that's the idea behind the R-Line, more sporty and different wheels and so on. 
in terms of comparing both top trims, the Atlas offers 21 inch wheels in Canada and the US, meanwhile, the Pilot offers 20 inch wheels. Now, that depends how you look at it because one inch higher essentially is going to cost you more money for the tires when time comes to replace them. Uh, one inch lower, that means it's going to be less maintenance overall. Also, the highest trim Atlas offers 12 inch screen for the infotainment, while the highest trim for the Pilot offers a nine inch, so much smaller screen. Conclusion, which one do I like out of these two? Now, in terms of the driving experience, they feel about the same minus the Pilot, which does have a bit of that road noise, something you don't feel as much in the uh, Atlas. Now, the difference could be also because they were driving a trail sport, which does have winter tires, but well, mostly off-road, actually. These are off-road tires and wheels are smaller. But even though I have driven the standard wheels for the Pilot, I do think that the Atlas is slightly better isolated on the inside. The steering feels about the same. One is just as light as the other one. You don't feel much difference driving back to back. One thing I do like about the Honda is the turning radius to be slightly better overall. The comfort suspension setup is about the same. Do feel a bit stiffer, of course, in the Atlas because I drove the R-Line. But other than that, it's about the same. The difference when it comes to suspension system for like these three raw SUVs, it's not really that noticeable. There's like minor differences here and there, but you really have to put them some sort of machine to actually find out the difference. Otherwise, humans could not detect some imperfections, which I, which I don't really feel like. Unless one had air suspension or adjustable coilovers or adjustable suspension system, then yes. But other than that, they're just about the same overall. One thing I do feel though is that the Pilot does feel more like a three-row SUV. Something that I don't feel that with the Atlas, which is kind of weird. And the fuel efficiency the Atlas offers could be a, a, an advantage if someone is looking for the most fuel efficient out of the two. The interior in the Atlas is quite nice, I have to say. I love the screens. Um, they're just, they give you a different perspective. But then the Pilot does have that rugged interior, which kind of like you get inside and just throw your phone and throw your bag and you don't really care about scratching. It feels very industrial, especially this one with the trail sports. But having said that, even though the price is about the same and the fuel efficiency is the Atlas, I do prefer the Atlas a bit more. I like the interior. Uh, the engine is a bit zippier, the turbocharged four-cylinder engine. It's a bit zippier than the V6. You feel that turbo. The shifts are quick as well. The 10 speed is still up there, but I think overall space tech features, the Atlas, in my opinion, is slightly the better choice, but that of course comes down to your preference too. Which one do you like inside out? Atlas, Pilot? But for me, the Atlas is a slightly the better choice. Not the best choice, slightly better overall. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and check out my other videos on my channel.